Josie pouted, but I managed to patch it up. Perceiving Dexter's gloomy gaze, Josie quickly sat up straight and mumbled, I'll be more careful in the future. Dexter warned coldly, you'll be finished if it happens again. Josie nodded incessantly. Please drop me at the next junction. I'll go back to the hospital to visit my father. Paul and Henry stayed in the same hospital. Dexter said nothing and pulled off the road. Before getting out of the car, Josie gazed at Dexter fervently. I did a good job, didn't I? Grandpa seemed to be happy, Mr. Russell. My full attendance bonus. You're not going to get it. Josie freaked out. I was wrong. I shouldn't have provoked him. Oh well, then. Josie crossed her arms and said fearlessly, All right then. I'll meet Grandpa again when I'm back in the hospital later. Just as Josie was about to unfasten the seatbelt, Dexter gripped her wrist immediately. Are you threatening me? Josie answered with a wide grin. I wouldn't dare. Very well. Let's go back together to visit your father. Josie was stunned. No way he wants to visit my father, given his fierce look. He will most likely take off my father's oxygen mask. Josie wussed out and muttered. I'm sorry, Mr. Russell. I'll not interrupt Grandpa. I'll forego the bonus. Dexter snorted while Josie unfastened the seat belt and got out of the car sullenly. Last night, Josie was informed that Dexter had asked his subordinate to transfer Paul into the VIP ward. Josie sat down in front of the bed and was sorrowful, looking at her father, who had been in a coma for three years. Dad, quickly come around, would you? I miss you so much, and I miss talking to you. Josie's eyes turned red-rimmed. Truth be told, she couldn't remember if she was 12 when she met Paul. She was admitted to the same hospital. Her mind was blank when she regained consciousness, but the first person she met was Paul. Paul was a surgeon. He adopted Josie after she lost all her memories. He treated her and fed her medicine. When the police failed to find her family, he brought her home. Time flew. It had been more than 10 years since then. Hey, Joe. The ward door opened. Matthew Sander, Paul's doctor in charge, walked in, with her back facing Matthew. Josie wiped away her tears before she stood up to greet him. Hey, Matt. Josie and Matthew were close friends. In the past few years, Matthew had been helping her to pay the medical fees first when she was short of money. Dressed in a white coat, Matthew wore a smile on his handsome face and asked, Yesterday, I heard from the director that a first-rate medical team from overseas was sent to treat your father. Joe. How did you? Josie knew what Matthew wanted to ask how she got the money. Matt. I'm married. Matthew was shocked. Married. In the last three years, Matthew helped Josie generously, and Josie deemed him an elder brother, so she hid nothing from him and told him about the sham marriage with Dexter, Matthew thought the incident was dramatic. B, but this is too sudden. Yeah, I've been wanting to get married for a long time so that I can move out of the house and stay away from my mom. Dexter can help my dad too. So it's not a bad deal. Josie had reconciled with the fact. Staring at Josie's side profile, Matthew was dismayed by the sudden news. All the while, he thought Josie wouldn't consider getting married before Paul woke up, Little did he know that she had been wanting to get married. If so, he. After talking with Matthew, Josie stayed in the hospital to accompany her father until five in the evening. Then, she bought some groceries in the supermarket and went back to Mason Garden by public bus. Dexter was not home after Josie had dinner, so she washed up and went to bed. Dot dot in the middle of the night, she woke up due to thirst. She went downstairs in a daze to drink a glass of water and returned to her room to continue sleeping. Schedule ended. He went back to his bedroom and switched on the light. As he was about to walk to the bathroom, his steps halted. How on earth did this woman appear on my bed? Dressed in cotton sleepwear, Josie was sleeping in an unruly position with her fair. Long legs exposed in the air, Dexter's eyes darkened. He went up and grasped Josie's arm. Josie Warren. Hmm. What are you doing? 
Josie rubbed her eyes and shoved Dexter's hand away. She glared at him and mumbled. Why did you come to my room in the middle of the night? Dexter refuted with a cold face. Look clearly whose room is this? Only then did Josie become completely awake. She glanced around the room. It was Dexter's room she had knocked into the wrong room. Upon realizing the fact, Josie's anger was dismissed at once. She got off the bed and apologized carefully. I'm so sorry. I was too sleepy and accidentally walked into the wrong room. Accidentally walked into the wrong room. Dexter examined her sharply, obviously. He didn't buy her reason. Was it an accident? Or do you have other intentions? Josie explained earnestly. It was an accident. I. Dexter didn't bother hearing her explanation and interrupted her coldly. Get out. Josie snorted and quickly slipped away. Dexter was frustrated to have a woman in his villa, yet he had no choice but to live with her given the current situation, because Henry might send someone to check in on them at any time. After taking a shower, Dexter lay on the bed. Josie's scent lingered on his pillow, which made him frown as he subconsciously recalled the scene when he spotted Josie just now, exasperated. He got off the bed and changed the bed sheets. With that, he finally fell asleep, unfortunately. Josie bumped into Dexter the following day when she was about to head out. The two left the villa together, but one got into his Rolls Royce while the other walked half a mile to the bus station. The two left the villa together, but one got into his Rolls Royce while the other walked half a mile to the bus station. Josie wasn't hoping that Dexter would give her a ride to Russell Group. After all, he had warned her not to reveal their marriage to anyone in the company. Not long after Josie settled down in her seat in the office, her director summoned her to his office. Josie was an interior designer. The design department director was a man in his 30s named Patrick Davidson. He always picked on Josie because Josie rejected his pursuit when he first joined the department. Miss Warren, I can't believe you dared to bunk off work and apply for leave two days in a row. Do you think you're the boss now? Have you finished a design for Hachi? Hachi was a new real estate project developed by Russell Group. Every designer was required to submit a piece of work. The best would be chosen for the project's interior design. Josie was occupied the past few days, so she didn't have time to work on the design. She pouted, Mr. Davidson, the task was only assigned two days ago, there's still one week until the deadline. Moreover, Josie reckoned her design would not be chosen even if she completed the task, although she was talented, Patrick had been suppressing her for the past few years, so she had no chance to exhibit her talents. How dare you talk back? Mind you and if you continue your behavior, you'll be fired sooner or later. Now, go and print this document for me. Josie rolled her eyes speechlessly. He's asking me to do odd jobs again. I'm now the president's wife. Someday. I'll ask Mr. Russell to fire you, nonetheless. Josie knew it was impossible, so. She could only follow Patrick's instructions and went to print the documents. After a busy morning, Josie stretched and looked at the time to realize it was time for lunch. Her colleagues had gone to the canteen. Josie, let's have lunch together. Alice, Josie's colleague, called out to her. Coming. Josie hummed in response and switched off her laptop. Right when they turned a corner, an unexpected guest showed up, which caused the smile on Josie's face to disappear at once. Josie. Jenny's voice was indifferent so that one couldn't tell her emotions, but Josie knew she must be up to no good to come and find her in the office at this hour. Josie asked Alice to go ahead first while she and Jenny went to the balcony. What is it? Josie asked directly. Jenny blurted mercilessly, don't play dumb, Josie. Regarding your brother's wedding I mentioned last time, you have to fork out the money as soon as possible. I've told you I have no money. There's nothing I can do to help. Josie. Don't force me to cross the line. If you wish to continue working here peacefully, you better give me the money, otherwise, you shall bear the consequence. Jenny threatened coldly. Josie clenched her fists as her face darkened. Jenny ignored her and continued. Since you've gotten married, 
the in-laws should more or less give some betrothal gifts. I'm not asking for much ten. Thousand. As long as you give it to me. I'll help you settle things with Jack, otherwise, all I want is the money. I reckon Jack is more than willing to give that to me, that's enough. Josie retorted. No matter what you do. My reply is the same, I have no money, with that. Josie turned and left, leaving Jenny, who stood stiffened at the spot, her chest was heaving, she never thought that Josie would still turn her down after she went all out. Very well, Josie, don't blame me. You'll regret this, Josie, Jenny scoffed with a sly look, little did they know that a figure walked out slowly from the corner right after they left, the woman wore a smirk on her face that was filled with surprise, dot dot so, Josie is actually married. Josie lost her appetite after the episode with Jenny, so she had a quick lunch and went back to the office. However, when she entered the office, she noticed many were secretly gazing at her while discussing among themselves, I can't believe she's someone like this. She's already married, so it must be true, this shows that she has been dating someone before this but has been pretending that she was single. Oh gracious. No wonder people say you can judge the book by its cover. Josie was confused, but she didn't bother with it and sat down in her seat. Hey Josie, I heard you're married. Is that true? Josie's heart jolted when she heard a colleague's question, and she was exasperated remembering what Dexter told her in the morning, just as she was about to deny it, she noticed some other colleagues were eavesdropping on their conversation from afar, these colleagues were all Josie's admirers who always fawned over her. As long as she did not reveal her husband was Dexter, Josie thought it was not a big deal to admit that she was married because it could fend off these unwanted pursuers. Yeah. It's true. The answer caused a sensation, the men who were listening attentively were disheartened immediately. Oh my goodness. Josie, when did that happen? Why didn't you mention it? A few colleagues quickly surrounded her. Yeah, man. How can you hide it from us for such a long time? You didn't invite us to the wedding ceremony either. Josie was abashed. The truth was, even she had yet to recover her senses after the flash marriage. Hmm. It just slipped my mind. Josie knew she would be in trouble if Dexter became aware of it. Tell us more about your husband. What is so special about him that a gorgeous woman like you is willing to forego all other options for his sake? Yeah. You guys must have dated for some time already. We've not even seen him once. Resigned. Josie invented some excuses to fob her colleagues off. She heaved a sigh of relief when her colleagues went back to their seats. Soon after she started working on her tasks, her phone started vibrating non-stop as messages flooded in. She looked down at the screen the messages were from her pursuers, demanding her to return the gifts that they had given her. Demon, these guys are so realistic, Alice couldn't help commenting. All of them were competing to win your favor when they courted you back then, who knew they would turn on a sixpence, on the other hand. Josie was not unhappy with how things turned out. It's fine. I'm not meant to receive those gifts in the first place, so it's best to return them, with that. She directly opened a chat group with those colleagues. I'll courier the stuff to your home address, please pay the courier fee upon collection, dot dot in a way I'll fork out my own money to pay the courier fee. Comments for the next episode.